be back in the house of the Lord, amen. Excitement in the air, Bible school this week. Wow, wow. I just found out a few minutes ago for worship services I would be singing. So uh, anyway, y'all pray for me. But my mind was going in the direction of Bible school, you know. Uh, I remember years ago as a child how we'd march into the church and stuff. But, you know, I told you this morning that about eight years old, I said that Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. I've never been sorry of it. I've been through some valleys and some storms, and I've been through some trials. But God has always been good. God has always been good. And I, I think I told this story before. You know, we, we, we sometimes wonder about little children, if they're even old enough to accept the Lord and Savior. But you know what? You to, if he's old enough to know right from wrong, if he's old enough to accept Jesus Christ into his heart. About a child eight years old, I can't tell you exactly what the preacher was preaching. I had no clue. But I know that I was in a dying need of a, of a Savior, and I accepted him one night in some revival. I've often thought when and where. I don't see nowhere mom, where Mama had wrote it down in the Bible or anything. I even called the church and asked the, to ask the secretary the date of it happening. I got a recording. I'm either out of the office. I'm going to lunch, call me, leave a number, and I'll call you back. And I got thinking about it, Brother Ron, driving down the road. I said, it don't matter. I was there when it happened. Never been perfect, but I'm forgiven, Brother David. I'm forgiven. Thank the Lord for forgiveness. But I remember him calling my name. Listen to the words of the song. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, please accept it. Eat. 
Call my name. Wow. Ooh, thank you, Lord, for calling my name. And he is almighty. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when the light grows dim. When the waves of doubt comes crashing in, you're the anchor in the troubled storm. Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace, you're my comfort in a time of need, you're my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on, you're the road to hope when the light grows dim, when the waves of doubt comes crashing in, you're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. And you're the road to hope when the light grows dim. When the waves of doubt comes crashing in, you're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in a time of peace. You're my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on. And you're the road to hope when the light grows in, when the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm, Almighty God. You're my joy, you're my peace. You're my comfort in a time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. You're the road to hope when the light grows dim and when the waves of doubt comes crashing in. You're the anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. You're the Trouble storm. Almighty God.
Amen. Thank God. Yeah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I tell you, my spirit is overwhelmed. Amen. I walked in, and if you want to know how I feel, I feel about what the sanctuary looks like. Amen. It just looks joyful. Amen. If you was feeling a little down and out, no doubt when you made that corner and seen what we see this morning, you had to cheer up just a little bit. Amen. I I watched as uh, some of the children come in. I said, come here, come here, look. And they, they acted like they were happy to see it, but mom and dad act like they was even more happy to see it, uh, is what I noticed, a, amen, when we come in uh, this morning. I, I do have a card here um, from preacher Tommy Hill, and I won't read the whole thing, but he is saying thank, uh, thank Evergreen for uh, the work that we did there uh, when we went to um, Hamlet, North Carolina, and worked on their sanctuary. He said that he is reminded of our kindness, is what he says in the card, every time he comes through the door of his sanctuary. Amen. And thank you everyone who was able to go on that mission trip and do the work there. It was a great work that we done. Amen. Uh, I give a report yesterday at the Central Association on that work day and uh, I was glad to report that uh, Preacher Tommy give us a list. We tell, them, we tell preachers when we come in and adopt a church, uh, if you don't know what we were doing, we were uh, helping a church out that didn't have means to do it. They didn't have people to do the work they needed to do around their sanctuary and fellowship hall. And so uh, I give the report that we ask them for a list of everything they'd like to see done. Don't make it as big as you want. And if y'all know Preacher Tommy Hill, he's good at making lists. Amen. And he made one that was long. And we, we appreciated that. And I was glad to report that we'd done everything he wanted on that list, plus a little more. Amen. And we thank Evergreen for what they do. And we love you this morning. And it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm excited for our Bible school this week. Amen. Uh, We've got an adult class, so everybody here is welcome to come. If you've never been to Bible school or you haven't been to Bible school since you were a kid, come on out and see what God's going to do here. Uh, It'll be a blessing to your soul. Amen. So if you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. I haven't looked a whole lot at the Bible school material. Um, I know the teachers has been picked out. Uh, uh, I got picked out to do Monday night of the teens, so I know what I'm going to be doing on there in the house of Dagon. That's one of my favorite lessons, amen. So teenagers be ready because I'm going to be ready. Uh, but uh, in the, the, the theme verse to this is what I actually was studying on because I seen that they had put this up, this word shine. Amen. And I said, well, I need to preach on something that uh, uh, goes with Vacation Bible School. Lord, give me a scripture. So I looked up the word shine in the Bible, and it's, a, it's several places. But this is the one that, that stuck out to me. So I started studying, and then I called the wife, and I said, what is the key verse of Bible school? And she told me Isaiah 60, verse number 1. I said, that's how God puts things together. Amen. So we're going to read just this one verse this morning. And uh, um, uh, I pray it will be a blessing to your heart. Isaiah 60 and verse number 1. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. One more time, arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. I want to preach this message this morning, rise and shine, amen. Let's pray. Father, we love you, we thank you for your word, and we ask you to help us. Now, you've brought us together, and we pray, Lord, that your word will speak to our hearts. We pray for our vacation Bible school, God, that you'll bless it, every class, everything that's done, every part, every person, Lord God, that's be laboring this week, God. Bless them in a special way, I pray, and we pray for souls uh, to be saved, and, and, and those that are saved to be fed, and we'll thank you for it all. And we pray that you'll be glorified in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. 
A amen. I want us to look right there now because uh, just hold your Bibles open. Uh, I don't plan on going anywhere else in the Bible. I'm going to stay right here. And so I just want us to keep our Bibles open and look down at this short verse we read. How powerful is the verse? Amen. Uh, the first word there in my Bible is all capitalized. I know that's the old English way of doing things when you would start uh, a, 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 a paragraph, if you will, or another thought or whatever. Uh, they would make it all capitalized. But I believe it's just a good translation because it's all capitalized. I used to have an uncle down in Florida, and when we lived there for about a year, I'd go spend the night with my cousins, and uh, we, we kind of slept on Saturday mornings uh, late as we wanted to, you know. We most time we got up pretty early because you're gonna miss cartoons if you sleep. Uh, so we got up pretty early, but he would get up about six o'clock. And here's what my uncle would do. He would go down the hallway and he'd tap on the doors and he'd say, rise and shine. And he'd go to the next one. He'd say, rise and shine. And all I knew is my uncle was so intimidating that if he told me to get up, I better get up. Amen. And, and, and here uh, in this scripture, we see a rise there and it's God speaking. Amen. It's, it's God that's saying, uh, get up. Okay. Point number one is get up this morning. Uh, he's saying that and he's, he's speaking to Zion. Zion, which is us, uh, the church, he is speaking to us, and he said, get up, amen. And it's not just an admonition, because it is an admonition, but it's an admonition with power, amen. When God says, arise, you're going to have to get up, amen. You're going to have to get up, or you're going to have to be rebellious and stay down. But when God says, arise, when he called Lazarus out of the grave, he had to come up, amen. When he called Zacchaeus down from the tree, he had to come down from the tree. When he tells you to get up, you're going to have to get up. Uh, or stay down and be rebellious. I, I, I tell you, when he says arise, there's enough power in that one word that we could get up. Amen. I tell you, a lot of people get down. A lot of people get uh, uh, in the muddy grubs and they get in that place. Hey, but God says we don't have to stay there. Uh, just man falls seven times, but he'll rise us back up. Hey, we have got to get up sometimes. Uh, there ain't but a couple words in this verse, so it can't be too long, right? Hey, well, you know why he said arise to the uh, to Zion, to the people of God? You know why he said arise to them? All you got to do, you want context, and all you got to do is back it up and read a little bit further uh, uh, behind it, and you would see why God said arise, why God would look at the, uh, his people and say, get up. Because if you'll look here, I wrote this down. This is what was going on with them. Hey, they were sleeping. And they was at least sitting. He says arise now. That means they were down. Hey, they were sleeping. They were sitting. They were slouching. They were sorrowful. They were slothful. They were cynical. Or they was just plain sinful. But God said get up. Get up my people. Get up. Amen. Hey, everybody gets down once in a while. Uh, I, I, if you've ever been down, if you're down this morning, I'm not beating on you. Everybody gets down once in a while. But God says in his word, you don't have to stay down. Rise, get up. Amen, get up. Get, how many times are I going to say it? Amen, my uncle had to knock on the door one time because the authority he had behind him. And I'm telling you, God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords has got all authority to tell us this morning that we can get up. People get down, churches get down. Hey, hey, people just get down. We live in this world and we're going to get down, but God says you don't have to stay. Arise. <clears throat> we can look in the Bible now. You can back it up. You still got your Bible open? You got one like me right there in chapter 60. Chapter 59 is right on the page right before it. You don't even have to turn. And on mine 59, if you look at it, we can see why they were down. Huh? Here, here I, I want us to notice something, though, before I read these. Look at verse number 1. Behold, uh, Isaiah 59, verse 1. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened. He's talking to a people that's down now. Remember that. The Lord's hand is not shortened. It ain't that God can't get to you. Hey, that it cannot save. Neither is his hear heavy that he cannot hear. Huh? He, he, he's saying everybody gets down, Brother Linwood. Everybody gets into a place where they need to get on back up. Amen. But he said, don't blame it on God. It ain't God's fault. I tell you what, the, the, the thing I see that bothers me the most and when people want to blame God for when they get down. 
Hey, it's okay to get down. You can get down, Brother Tony, and I know you always, but you could get down. I'd be okay with that. Hey, everybody gets down. I just hold you. Hey, I just shake your hand. I just tell you I love you. I'd have prayer with you, but don't blame God for you being down. Amen. Hey, behold, I, the hand, the Lord of the hand, uh, the Lord's hand is not shortened. Amen. Hey, He can still save you, deliver you from whatever's got you down. It ain't His fault. You know, you know, some of the most spiritual people that I ever see, when they get down, they know it's their fault. That's spiritual stuff right there. When you know it's you. I try to be honest with myself sometimes. It's me. It's me. I had a lady one time that was mad at me for three months. And I don't want to get into not the whole story, but, uh, but, but I didn't know it. And when she finally told me, I said, whatever it is, I, I just stopped her. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Whatever it is you're mad at me for, I didn't mean it like that. Because I would have never hurt her feelings on purpose. And she said, I know that. But I'm just here to tell you how I've been. And I know it's my fault. And I said, whoo. Huh? I felt a little relief because, uh, you know, we can always hurt somebody's feelings and not know it. Hey, hey, but she said it was me. It's me that's been down. I've been the one that's been down. And that's sometimes we get like that. Hey, but God is not at fault. Hey, and most of the time nobody else is at fault. We're at fault. It's our own fault. A amen. Here's what it says. It says in verse number 1 of 59, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, neither is his ear heavy that he cannot hear. Hey, verse number 2. Here's where it gets into the truth. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Huh? That's what separates us. That's why we get down. Uh, that's why we get in the muddy grubs is because our sin has caused us to be like that. Hey, it's a sin too, by the way. Hey, not to show love and kindness to people. Hey, not to be cheerful. It's a sin not to be like that. I can show you in the Bible. I'll meet you after church and show you. Hey, hey it says, but your iniquities and your sins have hid his face from you. He will not hear. Brother Wayne, I'll get on your lesson. You let sin come into your life and iniquity come into your life and you living like that and I've been saved, I've been sanctified, oh, I love God, and you get down like that, and here's what it says, not what the preacher says. I'm going to read it. It said, God ain't going to listen to you no more. Huh? Uh, God will hear your complaint just a little bit. He'll help you. He'll fix you. You keep on wallowing down there in that sin. You keep on standing down there in that sin, and he clearly says that he will not hear you anymore. I ain't making it up. You know what we got to do? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Hey, most of the time when you get down on something, hey, and you get down working on something, hey, most of the time you get dirty when you get down and dirty on something. Amen? Hey, you get out there and you, your hands get a little dirty and you got you sweating a little bit. Next, hey, look, it gets dirty and he says sometimes we get down like that and God says we got to rise up. Because your iniquities and your sins, it's not God's fault. Hey, look at what it says about our hands. Our hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. This is Israel, right? This ain't America. To be sure, this couldn't apply to us. I mean, the word isn't alive and quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, is it? It's not relevant right now today, is it? Huh? Hey, because none calleth or pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity. Oh, Lord. Hey, and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. I mean, you can read on down. He starts calling us the cockatrice, amen, and eggs and all these uh, 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 animals that we don't even want to touch. He says the vipers and all. He says that's who you are. Look at what verse 8 says. It says, and there's no judgment. Pay me verse 8. He said, look in your Bibles. Hey, the 
the way of peace they know not and there is no judgment. I'm going to tell you what, we better start making a righteous judgment, church. Hey, we better start. Somebody said, don't be judging. I'm telling you, God says we get down because we don't make judgments. He didn't say be self-righteous and, and look down your nose at somebody. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about we need to discern what's right and what's wrong. He said, there's no judgment. Well, Christians is judgmental. You better be the most judgmental people in the world, but you better judge a righteous judgment. You better know what's right and what's wrong. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't see nothing wrong with this. You better start making the right judgment. Verse 9, therefore, is judgment far from us. Look at verse 11. We roar like bears and mourn and soar like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. Preacher, why are you saying all this this morning? God's telling us to get up. Huh? He's telling us to get up because this is where they were at. There was no judgment. There was no judgment. Look, look how, look how in, in tune this is, Brother Thomas. Watch this now. Verse 14. I'm talking about being down. And judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off, for truth is. If the church don't stand up for the truth, what's the world going to do? He's talking to the church now. He's talking to Zion. He's talking to the people of Israel. You can relate it. You can put it right here in today's terms. He's talking to us. And he says, truth is falling. Hey, we read it the other night. Judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. This is encouraging. I don't know if it's encouraging to you or not, but it's encouraging to me. I better start making the right judgments, and I better start doing what's right. Hey, I'm telling you, I can name them right now. I can name them. I've got Facebook. I can name it over and over again. People that say, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Hey, people celebrating the devil, and they don't see nothing wrong with it all over the place. Hey, they, 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 they supporting the enemy, if you will, and no judgments being made. And he says everything's backwards, and there's no and truth is fallen verse 15 truth faileth last part of it and there is no judgment because everything's fell down but it ain't God's fault look at verse 19 of Isaiah 59 look at the very very last line he says but when the enemy shall come in like a flood the spirit of the Lord it's good to me the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. We can get down because of sin, because of slackness, because of sorrow, because of anything. But God said he'll lift us up. Amen. He said, God ain't the one taking us down. The devil wants us to go down. Hell's down. Heaven's up. Amen. And God wants us to go up. He wants us to go to heaven. He says, get up. Arise. Shine. That's point number two. He says, you, I'm telling you, get up. But I'm telling you also to light up. Don't just get up, but light up. Nothing, nothing, nothing does me better, I'm telling you, is when people come around that door and they got a smile on the face. Huh? Huh? You ever heard somebody say, when they walk in the room, they light it up. Huh? How about you this morning? How'd you come in this morning? When you walked around the curb, what'd you see? Hey, you seen all this beautiful uh, decorations and you didn't smile, amen? You didn't know that the gospel was going to be taught this week? Hey, I'll tell you what we ought to do in this world. We ought to shine. Amen. I ain't going to do the third point. I'm going home. Is that you? Huh? Is that you? Let me tell you what you ain't doing. You ain't shining. Huh? You're trying to blow candles out is what you're doing. Huh? 
God told us what God say. He said, get up. Light up. My daughter sure does love Bud Darrell. When we first came, she said, I like the, the one guy. So what, which one? She said, the older one. And I said, that's a lot of them, ain't it, And then she said this. She said, you know, the one. And I said, Daryl. She said, yes. He always makes me smile. We all gonna get down sometime. But you don't have to come in the room. If you if you come in down, hey, I wanna love you. If you come in down, just come on in and go down. And get it right right there. Hey, come on down and pray. You know what you'll do? Look, I have never seen anyone that's not altar call time that come in and got on this altar that everybody else that was in here, most people went down and prayed with them. We need to shine. We need to shine. We can smile even when our circumstances ain't nothing to smile about. Hey, we're not, we're not saved by circumstances. We're saved by the grace of God and the goodness of God and the mercy of God. And I'm going to tell you what, it's going to make me smile and I want to shine, shine, shine for Jesus Christ. I want to light it up. The Bible tells us that we have the light is what it say in verse number one. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Amen. Thy light is come. Hey, we have the light. We are the light, the Bible says. We're able to shine. We're bound to shine. And we're called to shine. Shine. See, light reveals the truth. It exposes darkness. Verse number one, he says, arise and shine to his people, his creation, his church. And I thought, why? Why did he have to tell us that? If you're born again, why does God have to tell us to rise and shine? Because Sister Jackie, he told the stars when he breathed them out there to shine, and they still shine. He told the sun, he put it in place, and he lit it up, and he said, shine. And it's always come up, hasn't it? But we're not like a star. We're not like the sun. But we're like little moons. We reflect the light of God. That's how we shine. And do you know the moon always shines the light of the sun? It may be just a little crescent moon, or it may be a full moon. Hey, isn't that like us? Amen. Sometimes we got a little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Sometimes we come in just poof. But the only time that the moon don't shine is when the world gets in the way. The only time you're not going to shine is when you let this old world get you down. You let this old world turn you on in another way. You let this old world get in your way of shining. Hey, look here. And we are to shine. We are to shine. We are, Don't let this world get in your way. Hey, darkness will come your way from this world. Hey, this world, what was it when God created it? He said it wasn't nothing but darkness. Amen. And he said he'd give the light and separated it. Uh, the darkness of pain will get you down. The darkness of sorrow will get you down. The darkness of suffering. The darkness of sin but today, right here, hey, right here this morning, God says, hey, light it up. Light up. He said, get up. Light up. John the Baptist, John chapter 1, verse 8. Now, John the Baptist says he was not that light. 
but he came to bear witness to that light. That's what I come to do this morning. How about you? When we leave this place and we go somewhere else, are we going to come in to bear witness of that capital L, huh? that capital light? He says, arise. How simple, right? Shine. He said, get up and light up. Look at the last part of the verse. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Our perfect example was Jesus Christ. He came to this earth, born of a virgin. Lived a sinless life, done many signs, miracles, wonders. And they beat him. And he was, in a, he was down in a garden and he prayed. And they hung him on an old rugged cross. But he rose on us. <laughs> Hey, he rose on us. Amen. Give us back verse number one. Amen. Hey, he rose on us. You know what Jesus Christ went and done? He rose upon us. Amen. Hey, he got up. He got up. He telling us to get up, to light up because he got up. Because he got up. How come, I, how, how come I can get up when I'm down? Because he got up when he was down. How can I get up and put a smile on my face? Because he arose and he shined forth. Hey, how can I do it? Because I had a Savior that showed me what to do. And he says he got up. And I believe him. That's why I'm saved today. Because I serve a risen Savior. You go on by the grave of Muhammad, he's still in there. Amen. You go by the grave of Buddha, if he had a grave, he'd be in there. Amen. Uh, Confucius is still in the grave. Sung Young Moon is still in the grave. Any other person that ever followed anybody else is still in the grave. Hey, they made a stone, wood, hay, or stubble. But we got a God who was alive and died and rose again. Why? To show us that we can get up and we can light up because he got up. Go back to John and I'll be done. John 1, 4 through 5. It says, in him was life. And the life was the light of men. And it shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. And going down and read on down, he said, he came into his own. And his own received him not. But to many of them that did receive him, to them he gave them power to become the sons of God. Even those who believe on his name. And if you believe this morning and you've been down spiritually in your life, you can rise up. Amen. You can say, you know what, I'm going to get up this morning. I'm going to let this light of mine shine. I'm serving an almighty God who got up for me. And, and, and I want to serve him. And this morning, if you're in that place, you can come. God's yelling it hey, in the short sermon like this. All he's got to say is arise and shine. And he'll help you this morning. It's not his fault. His hand's not short. He's mighty to save you. Hey, not save you in salvation, just save you from the, uh, 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 the depression you might be in, the sorrow you might be in. He can save you from that as well. Amen. And if you need him as we all stand, he's an almighty God this morning. And I want you to know that he's here to help us. He got up to show us that we can get up. If you need to come talk to him this morning, why don't you come? Why don't you come? As he sings that song again, Brother Thomas. He says, arise. He's got power behind him. He's an almighty God. I could yell to the top of my lungs. And he could whisper to you this morning and it'd be more powerful. You're my joy. You're my peace. You don't have to stay down. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on. Who are you depending on this morning? You're the road to hope when the night grows dim. And the waves of doubt comes crashing in. You're my anchor in the troubled storm. Oh, my God. You're my joy. You're my peace. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're the one I depend on.
you the Lord. On. Would you be the first one to say, I'm willing to step out? You're the road to hope when the light grows. Maybe down. somebody's waiting when the on you to step out before they step comes out. Crashing you down. Have you been down? You're my in the trouble God says, arise. He said, get up, oh, child. God. Get up, child. God don't take us down. God lifts you us up. The cross. You bear the scar. As these are praying around the altar, maybe one more. You maybe you need that salvation. Maybe you should be saved this morning, God, if He's speaking to your heart. You gave me sight that I might see the kind of man that I should be. Maybe you come in this morning with a smile on your face, but you go down in your heart. You're fighting something that's bigger than you are, and it's got you down. You go Is a lot of he died, set me free. Almighty God, you're my joy, you're my peace. You don't have to stay down, you're my comfort in time of need, you're my refuge, you're my rock, you're the one I depend on. You're God's the able this to hope when He's the able to help you. When the waves of doubt come, what I would do, I would just come down and say, God, I need to get up from where I'm at. That's right. That's what I would do. God. Hey, hey, God, you can help me. You're my peace. Yes. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. Hey. You're my rock. You're my rock. You're my hand on. That's all you can hear right now is get up. Get up, get up. The rush to hug when the light grows dim. When the waves of doubt come crashing in, you're my anchor in the trip. What are you waiting on, buddy? Hey, God, speak into your heart. You're my joy. Have you been down, down, down? God says, you're up. You're my comfort in time of need. You're my refuge. He don't want us just to get up, but he wants us to shine. You're the road to hope when the light grows dim and when the waves of doubt come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. He's the one that's able to help us. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. Brother Jay Bird, just let that music play right there, brother start that music again and I just want to say this morning I know people say preacher if you would have went a little bit longer I would have came and right now you may be listening to them two voices on your shoulder and one of them's telling you you ain't got to go down if you go down they're going to think something's wrong no if you come down I'm going to think something's right Something's right. I think there's something wrong when people just sit and they sit and they sit and they sit. And they're in the slumber and they're in the sleep and they might even be run out of oil in their lamp. And God says, get up. I've got oil. I want you to shine. God's going to have to give you the oil. Don't look to your neighbor to give it to you. He can't give you his oil. He needs his oil. You come get your own oil. praying around the altar this morning. If that's you, if God spoke to you, you didn't come for this this morning, but God's told you that you need to get up. You need to come right now. You need to come right now.
not depending on this morning. You need to come on. Hey, I think there's something right with the crashing in my Almighty God. There's something right when we come to the feet of Jesus Christ. You're my joy. Say, God, you're, you're my, my joy peace. in my time of trouble. You're my comfort in a time of need. You're my comfort in my time of need. You're my refuge. You're my rock. You're, you're the, the one, one I depend on. on. Hey, listen. And you're the road to hope when the light grows, even when the waves of self come crashing in. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. Praise the Lord. You're my anchor in the trouble storm. Almighty God. Amen. Let's pray one for another. I truly don't know how people make it without the Lord. We need him. Amen. He loves us this morning, not because of how good we've been, but because of how good he is. And he loves you this morning. If you're lost, he don't love sin. and He wants to cleanse you from your sin. I want you to know that if you leave this place lost this morning, I want you to know that God loves you and he wants to save you got sin in your life he he said it I didn't say it I'm not being mean I got to stick with the Bible and he said sin will separate us from him don't let sin separate you from a God who loves you and died for you and rose to show us that we can get up when we get down I mean we love you in the Lord let's remember all the things if you've got somebody that's coming to vacation Bible school and they don't have a home church, I call them this afternoon and say, come on out this evening. And we're going to, I'm going to pick my little neighbor up. So he's going to be here. And uh, so uh, bring somebody with you tonight. They're going to, we're going to, we're going to preach some, but uh, they're going to do a little opening skit and show us what Bible school is going to be about. So let's look forward to this. I tell you, somebody's worked hard around here. Amen. Amen. And we're thankful for that. And uh, thank you for volunteering, everyone who's volunteered to help in some kind of way. I know there's a lot of wheels turning, and so we thank everybody for that. And uh, we certainly thank Sister Lacey and Sister Katie. You, you've done a good job, and uh, I, I'm looking forward to it. Amen. So be praying about this. Any other announcements? You're going to meet right after the night service or right after this service. This morning. Five, five minutes this morning. Amen. And if you're, if you're not going to be able to be here and you've got a, a blanket, take it home. It's a good time to maybe put some more snuggles in it. Amen. It's a QR code. We high tech. Amen. I'm not sure what QR code stands for, but we got one, amen. And uh, you, you scan it with your phone and register early. That way when you get here, you can go right into the fun, amen. If no other announcements this morning. Yep, lock box is still in the back. Everything's been changed around and decorated. Uh, but uh, the lock box is back there if you'd like to give something to this cause. All right. Good to see everyone in the house of the Lord. Good to see some that's been sick and uh, here with us today. And uh, we're so glad that you're here and we love each one. I'm going to ask Brother Lawrence if he will. Uh, Brother Lawrence.